Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Game series and our Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look at a Rook Odds game today. It's going to be a bite-sized video because it's a really quick game but I thought it was a brilliant illustration of um, how Rook Odds, Odds from Leela are never just the piece itself but it's often a piece plus a couple of pawns because Leela's not at all afraid of just giving pawns away in order to um, uh, either open lines or if you ignore them to disrupt the opponent's pieces and it can just be extraordinarily dangerous and it's hard to imagine that a 2500 uh, light chess or blitz player could be defeated in just 13 moves uh, just you know from this sort of opening but it's possible simply just the way that Leela plays. What I will say as well is that um, I've played this an awful lot in Lee Chess Blitz. It was actually an idea of a crazy Leela, so Leela with contempt. And uh, yeah, I just scored amazingly with it simply. It's just incredibly dangerous and incredibly powerful. Um, so let's have a look how that went. So knight f3, knight f6, d4, b6, c4, bishop, b7, sort of a Queen's Indian type thing. And uh, white uh, Leela plays the move g4. So you could actually ignore that pawn, uh, but then of course, you know, g5 will happen and the knight on f6 will be disrupted. Not necessarily bad, but yeah, you're already out of uh, standard stuff basically. And, you know, that's kind of the most important. Um, Black decided to take the pawn on g4 because why not? And uh, Leela played the move d5. So shutting off the bishop and um, yeah, preparing then to you know, gain some uh, central space with e4. And uh, of course, with a pawn on e4, once the knight goes back to f6, you get an e5. So e6 and then rook g1. And uh, I mean, straight away, you see the, the slight yeah, irritation, uh, difficulty of, um, of black having taken the pawn on g4 because the rook's um, attacking uh, the knight and then the pawn on g7 behind it. That's going to mean that... Uh, you know, Black's going to have a few difficulties developing the um, the bishop on f8. And that's, you know, one of the big things that's been happening in, in my Blitz games um, with the rook on a1. You know, that um, uh, Black players are, are struggling really to get the king's side developed. And, uh, yeah, the center's just uh, pushing through there. Number, number of things that Black can play. f5 is one move. Um, Black played knight f6, which is quite sensible and has tended to be the main line that... Uh, People have played against me when I've played this stuff in Blitz. Knight c3. And now um, Black does something um, a little bit funny. I think, you know, players seeing, you know, the, the missing rook on a1 or a missing knight uh, are tending to think that that means that the danger that can occur in the opening is therefore greatly lessened. But uh, in actual fact, you know, uh, it is amazing the amount of danger that you can create with a piece less. And uh, in actual fact, this rook on a1 is a, a total irrelevance to the counterplay that um, uh, that white is going to create. All the pieces that are relevant to the attack are here. And the rook on a1 is completely unimportant. Of course, you know, the fact that you're a rook uh, up as black means you could sacrifice a rook to give back to, uh, you know, to break the play or whatever. But um, but the danger of the attack is not going to be lessened. And I think a lot of black players are, are, are not really grasping that at all in uh, in odds chess. Interesting, really interesting to see, you know, how the engines like Stockfish and Torch want to play, because, uh, for example, Knight a6 is an idea. And after e4, which is quite a natural move, um, Stockfish in a couple of games was looking at playing the move Knight takes e4. And after knight takes e4, playing the move bishop b4 check, and after bishop d2, then queen e7. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're threatening e takes d5. Y you know, you've broken the sort of the, the white barrier somehow, and you're in there fighting and, and giving white some difficulties in terms of, uh, of how to develop. Now, I don't doubt that Leela would find a way to sacrifice another couple of pawns and, uh, you know, still have some development uh, going somehow. But, you know, just really striking to see that, um, you know, that uh, that engines that could, you know, easily defend any position that you put in front of them, however bad looking, you know, they're choosing at an early stage to give back material and fight back. And um, I'm not saying that's, 
you know, the only way of playing. I'm not saying that it's necessarily the best way for a human to play, but I find it very striking how much they value, you know, the initiative that they're willing to just easily give back, you know, uh, half of the uh, material uh, gain that they have in order to fight back and um, and uh, increase their own dynamism. Very striking. And I think very different to the overwhelming majority of uh, approaches that you see uh, human players taking. So I think we can learn a lot from that, you know, from this uh, odds play. I do think that um, uh, the average human player, and um, by average, I'm, I'm also talking about, you know, quite strong light chess players, you know, 2700, etc., cetera, um, are not sufficiently dynamic in their play and uh, far too materialistic and include myself in that eh? it's uh so a6 was uh, what was what black played and black's looking to uh, to undermine the center with b5 not a um a crazy plan but it's you know it, it, it's not really fighting uh, what white is doing here white plays e4 um very interesting what were the engines looking at now all sorts of things but one of the lines was knight c6 of all things the idea being that if d takes c6, we go d takes c6, and we're ready to exchange off queens. Now, yeah, I mean, Torch was uh, playing bishop e2 and allowing the exchange of queens. You know that Leela wouldn't have done that. But I still found it really striking that Stockfish's reaction to this position is not to try and uh, necessarily to try and survive by doing anything. Just give material back, try and break the uh, the attack. I mean, the thing about it, of course, you play this against Leela. Leela's going to find ways of causing some difficulties there. So it's not killing everything dead, but it's what the engines think. You know, give material back. Don't let white develop an initiative. I mean, black continued with uh, with his plan and white played e5. Knight g8 and Leela went knight g5. And uh, well, I mean, I think we can already have the idea that there's pressure brewing right uh, on uh, some of these squares um you know i mean it's it's pretty dangerous right um so you know f7 e6 all under pressure but black didn't really feel the danger you can imagine what stockfish is suggesting knight c6 let's uh you know develop our queen side connect up the uh the queen and the rook important as you'll see and uh and also just get some some pieces out and try and break this dangerous front of uh of pawns here black kind of uh ignored it b takes c4 um i mean it's a three plus two game i mean you know you're you're, you're trying to get yourself uh, out there developed you don't really expect that from now on you're absolutely lost it's only move 10 after all and you're a rook up but leela took on f7 here and um yeah the best that uh, that uh that black has got is to queen e7 and to give the rook back but obviously i think as an odds player taking the odds you wouldn't really be that keen on um on doing that uh, black took the knight on f7 and white played d takes c6 and just like that it's absolutely all over um if you go king e7 we go queen h5 d takes c6 bishop g5 check and um yeah i mean it's it's all over right takes we take take bishop f6 and queen h4 check apart from anything else you might uh you might be doing just picking up the queen so um, black played the move uh, king e8 and queen h5 check ha happened and black resigned because after all, if g6, we've got rook takes g6 and takes is just going to be made. Really quick game, really quick video. But I mean, yeah, it's just uh, really striking. I, I think, you know, what, 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 what you're noticing about this um, is that, you know, you could play a lot of these systems that Leela is playing at odds in standard play right with the um uh here with a rook on a1 and it, it just shows you really that i do think that we've got a tendency to when preparing openings nowadays to you know look at the main line uh, which is what stockfish is saying or um or, or leela and you don't realize how much danger they're filtering out for you because they would be able to refute a line like this or, you know, get a good game for uh, for black in a line like this. They just don't show it to you. But Leela at odds play is sort of showing you, you know, like tens of uh, dangerous lines in all sorts of openings that, yeah, they might not be uh, objectively right. You might not be able to play them, uh, you know, uh, for the rest of your life. But yeah, in individual games, you know, there's just like an inexhaustible supply of really dangerous lines with lots of unusual tactical points. And uh, yeah, 
here, you know, 2,500 um, uh, light chess player just being completely demolished in uh, in 13 moves. You know, it's just crazy, right? With rook odds as well. Um, but I think it's just that we, we, we you know, we, um, we're we very much insulated, uh, you know, uh, to danger, um, you know, by um, by what the engines tell us. And uh, when you get an engine like Lila that's going outside those um, those standard paths and just saying, well, OK, I'm going to try this. Show me what uh, what you do against it. You suddenly realize how many dangerous lines are remaining under the radar. And uh, of course, if you know them, you could refute them. But there's just too many to uh, there's just too many Lila's coming up with with way too many to be able to do that. So, yeah, we've got to step up our game in terms of how we deal with uh, with quick danger and what we've prepared to do in order to um, to deal with it. And certainly in odds chess, uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, engines like Stockfish being very, very willing just to give back material, just to break that initial um, uh, that initial um, uh, uh, wave of attack from uh, from Leela. And that wouldn't be enough to win you the game, just dead, because Leela will keep on coming at you with more. But it will certainly stop you losing games quickly like this. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed that one. I saw it happen and uh, just, you know, just thought, wow, what did I just see there? What, what, what on earth happened? But yeah, crazy. Absolutely amazing. There we are. I hope you're enjoying this series. Lots more to come um on this and uh yeah some extra little special treats uh um i got uh, pointed towards one game by um uh by a player and uh, that he played with uh, leela inspired preparation so uh, preparing that one for you as well at the moment so do stay tuned to the channel lots more to come give a like subscribe to the channel if you like it tell your friends and uh otherwise thanks very much for watching and see you at the next video